Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel's been making a bunch of Fantastic Four movie announcements lately, mostly about Pedro Pascal and the rest of the cast, but we also learned a little bit more about Galactus during the movie, so we'll break it all down. There's just a lot of Marvel stuff happening the last couple of weeks. If you're brand new to the channel, of course I'll be doing videos for everything. Be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We actually just got the What If Season 2 trailer video. That'll be like the next big Marvel series after Loki. That'll be coming later this year. The real big news you probably saw in your feeds this week though, in addition to all the What If Season 2 stuff, is that now that the strikes are over, Marvel's ramping up on all their movies and shows across the board, not just Fantastic Four. But before the strikes, they had a few actors for the Fantastic Four that seemed like they were pretty locked down, but for whatever reason, the strikes lasting so long, people getting cold feet about being in the Marvel movies for like the next 10 years because they're casting like the main version of the Fantastic Four, they're gonna be in a bunch of movies for the next 10 years. But with all the delays from the strikes, just all the chaos behind the scenes now, it sounds like some of their plans for actors have changed a little bit. So the cast has changed again, and probably the biggest news is that apparently Pedro Pascal is going to be the new main version of Reed Richards. <laughs> which was a total surprise for me. I was actually kind of blown away. I would have never considered him for the role before this. There were even people earlier this year after The Last of Us on HBO and then The Mandalorian Season 3 came out like one right after the other and people were like, just you wait, Pedro Pascal probably gonna wind up being Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. So even if you were just joking about it earlier this year, but you correctly guessed that it was gonna be Pedro Pascal, pat yourselves on the back. Previously, there have been reports that Jake Gyllenhaal was going to be their new Reed Richards, but he just turned down the offer, apparently. Personally, I'm kind of glad that he did, because can you imagine him showing up in Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, with Tom Holland's Spider-Man in that interaction? It would be the most confused you would ever have seen Spider-Man in any Marvel movie before, even seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's version in No Way Home. All those Sinister Six multiverse characters, like he would just completely blank staring at him. Probably think that he was secretly Mysterio having returned from the multiverse. Like, what are you trying to pull here? I'm really fucking nervous. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal would be much better as the maker, who's like the evil version of Reed Richards from another alternate universe. Even though most of you would probably just assume that whoever they pick for the new main version of Reed Richards will also wind up playing the maker in some multiverse movie like Secret Wars. Just because that is such a deep cut, I do expect them to do the maker at some point in some future Fantastic Four sequel movie. In success, maybe he'll wind up being like the main villain of the third Fantastic Four movie and whatever this new trilogy winds up being. But I think Marvel and Disney's reasoning for going with Pedro Pascal is that he's like the safe bet for them. Some of you probably expected them to make a much weirder pick for their new main version of Reed Richards, but Pedro Pascal has been in that Disney ecosystem for a long time now through The Mandalorian. And if you think about it, they're supposed to already be a family, the Fantastic Four is a family, so to speak, when the movie picks up. And Pedro Pascal is mostly known recently for his dad roles, like both in The Mandalorian with Grogu and The Last of Us with Ellie. In fact, Matt Shackman from WandaVision is still directing the movie. They've been doing pre-production during the strikes because they've been able to do that. They just haven't been able to film with actors or actually write the movie itself. But during the strikes, they've been doing everything else that goes into actually making a movie, like doing all the concept art, basically building the world out. He literally just released a preview video talking about the actual movie. You know, it's funny, we have these characters that you discover when you're a kid and they just stick with you. Godzilla was one of them and the Fantastic Four was another. I think I love the space race, Kennedy era optimism of that world, the idea that we can solve all of our problems, that we can, through the right heart and the right mind and the right technology, conquer any problem. You know, it's different in so many ways because they are a true family, not a family you find along the way like the X-Men or the Avengers, but true family with all the messiness of a family like on Monarch, you know, with all the love and the hurt and the complexity of that. And also they approach things with a sort of an optimistic and scientific approach that is very different from these other Marvel characters that I absolutely love, but how they solve problems is unique and I'm excited about it as well. I hope folks like it when we put it out. You kind of get the vibe of the movie just in general, just him talking about it. But Pedro Pascal has just hit a couple of massive home runs the past couple of years with The Last of Us on HBO. He's blowing it up all over the place. Kevin Feige and the Marvel and Disney people probably just felt like he was a very, very safe bet for them. 
Like, we know he can act, we already have a contract with him for this upcoming Mandalorian Season 4, Ahsoka Season 2, the Thrawn movie that's gonna spin out of that, so like, we're already doing a bunch of stuff with him, so why don't we just add like a page to his contract for all this Fantastic Four stuff. Talk about Pedro Pascal into the Pascalverse. This does make me feel like he is probably never going to take his helmet off on the Mandalorian again. He's got like three other movies that he's working on right now, so do not be surprised if his Mandalorian Season 4 episodes are just in voiceover with him not taking the helmet off. If you haven't seen much of his live-action acting, The Last of Us is probably the best go-to, at least at first. Narcos also a pretty good example of like a slightly more serious version of the character. Most of his Mandalorian stuff is just voiceover. I think that his version of Reed Richards would be somewhere between like John Krasinski's more serious version of the character, a little down to earth, and Young Griffith's version of the character, who is way more comic booky, just way lighter in tone in general. Personally, I found John Krasinski's version of the character a little more chill than the Miles Teller version of Reed Richards. Most consider him to be like the most hardcore, dark, serious version of the character because that Fantastic Four movie is like the darkest, most hardcore Fantastic Four movie just in general. Based on the rest of this new MCU Fantastic Four movie cast, I think Marvel's going for something slightly lighter in tone than that, but not as wacky as the classic Chris Evans Fantastic Four. Like the way that Matt Shackman talks about it, it's not going to be all dark and serious, but it won't be quite as wacky as the classic Fantastic Four. As far as we know, the rest of the Fantastic Four cast, as of this week, hopefully this doesn't change, is still Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm. She was literally just asked about this while she was promoting the Napoleon movie and is very clearly trying to avoid talking about it. It's kind of funny. You think Marvel is going to announce you in Fantastic Four? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to ask them. <laughs> is that one of the projects that you're excited to, to be joining? I would be very honored to join. You could tell she's been practicing on not answering these questions recently, like, oh, you're gonna get a bunch of questions about this Fantastic Four stuff, so do not reveal anything. I already did a video about her, Sue Storm, back when she was first referenced as the character earlier this year. We've known about her for a while. She was supposedly, like, one of the first actors that they locked down. One of the big changes with this new MCU Fantastic Four solo movie, though, is that supposedly she'll become a much bigger character than she's been in previous versions. Like, previously, she was more of a side character. Personally, I'm hoping that she plays a more hardcore, weird, unhinged version of the character, like most of Vanessa Kirby's roles in her live-action movies. Like, if you haven't seen the Napoleon movie yet, like, it's just coming out in the next week. She's fantastic in that. But, like, imagine her character in all the Mission Impossible movies that she's been in. Just that weird, unhinged energy. Just cannot wait to see that inside an MCU Fantastic Four movie. Supposedly, Eben Moss Bacharach from The Punisher in The Bear on FX is going to be the new Ben Grimm thing. He was great during the Punisher series as Micro. This basically confirms he won't be back in Daredevil Born Again as that version of Micro, but this is fine. Like, this is a huge upgrade for him being in Fantastic Four. I think that his Ben Grimm is going to feel a little closer to the kind of energy that you see from his character on the bear. Like, he's a very nice character, but almost every other word that comes out of his mouth is a curse word. And just like Vanessa Kirby, he has this weird, unhinged, kind of crazy energy to him. During The Punisher, he was always getting pushed around by Frank Castle, the other characters, and that's not really the way The Thing would be reacting to that kind of pressure around him. Like, his whole catchphrase is, it's clobberin' time. He would much rather clobber his problems and the people giving him grief. Reportedly, their version of Johnny Storm, Human Torch, as of me posting this video, is still Joseph Quinn from Stranger Things. Most of you remember him as Eddie Munson. He was great during that series. And I've talked about the villains before, but reportedly the main villain of the movie will be a much more comic book accurate version of Galactus. No more floaty cloud Galactus. There was a version of the character they almost wound up using in Thor Love and Thunder. I'm so happy that they wound up deleting that scene. Like, you can clearly tell that it was going to be Jane Foster Thor fighting a version of Galactus, and that's not the way you want to introduce the character to the MCU if you want people to take the character seriously. For most of this year, it was supposed to be Antonio Banderas playing the character, like Puss in Boots Galactus, but now it looks like Javier Bardem might wind up playing their Galactus. We'll see. Either way, they're not too different in terms of what you expect from them, but Javier Bardem is just more known for his more hardcore villainous roles. So I think if Marvel wants a more hardcore, serious Galactus, Javier Bardem would be the one to go with. Both of them are great actors, though. And speaking of Galactus, the next big question, what about Silver Surfer? Apparently Silver Surfer is not supposed to be in this first new Fantastic Four movie, or at least as a big character. They're actually supposed to be using Terax as his herald. 
he was one of the subsequent heralds after Galactus first debuted in the Fantastic Four comics. Like, when he debuted for the first time, Silver Surfer was his herald, but then eventually Terax was introduced as a subsequent herald. This is also one of the reasons why they're doing Galactus in the first new MCU Fantastic Four movie, because he wasn't the first Fantastic Four villain, but he was one of their very, very early villains in their very first comic book run. Marvel is going super cosmic, heading into Avengers 5 and Avengers 6 Secret Wars. Galactus is like one of the biggest, metaphorically and literally, cosmic characters from the comics they have not done yet in the new MCU movies. It almost seems like doing the Celestials in the Eternals movie was sort of like a test run for them pulling a more comic book accurate version of Galactus off. Like, okay, here are these super weird, super cosmic, super powerful beings with a bunch of lore behind them that's way different from anything we've done in the MCU so far. Maybe we could actually do a version of Galactus without everybody laughing at him. There have been all kinds of rumors about what the actual plot of the movie is going to be, how they're going to explain where the Fantastic Four come from, how they explain their existence in the MCU. But Matt Shackman, the director, said that most people have absolutely no idea. Like, their approach to the movie is going to be so different from the previous Fantastic Four movies that a lot of people just will be totally blown away. And I think the idea is they're going to say that they actually do come from another universe, and that's why none of the MCU characters either know about them or have mentioned them up to this point. Most of you also probably realize that Kevin Feige wants to sort of set up the Fantastic Four, particularly Reed Richards and Sue Storm, as big pillars in the MCU, the way that Iron Man, Captain America, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, those other characters have been in the past. The X-Men will be like big pillars too, but we haven't seen a lot of them show up yet. That won't happen until a little bit later. But you can kind of see with this whole Marvel soft reboot they're doing in Secret Wars and them pivoting towards X-Men, Fantastic Four stuff, how some of those characters will become like the new central figures next to people like Spider-Man the next 10 years of Marvel. For the most part, I think people are ready for them to do a really hardcore X-Men saga like Marvel Phase 7, 8, 9, whatever that winds up being after Secret Wars. Speaking of which, supposedly we're going to get the X-Men 97 episodes at some point early next year. Like, we just got the What If Season 2 trailer video. I think that's meant to sort of tee up, like, their next big saga of animation with the X-Men stuff. I literally just did a video for that, so I'll link it at the end of this. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up, too, but if you have any big questions about Fantastic Four, just in general, just write them below in the comments. And as we get more announcements, I'll do more videos about the movie. There's been all kinds of reports about them pivoting away from the Kang character and pivoting towards Doctor Doom. I'll do a video about that sometime in the next couple of days, too. I'm still working on a brand new Loki Season 3 video that should be up in the next couple of days. My next big video will be for Invincible Season 2 Episode 3. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. There's also a brand new Godzilla Monarch series. The first couple of episodes will be up later tonight. I'll try to do a video for that sometime soon, too. Click here for my brand new What If Season 2 trailer video in Easter eggs, and click here for that brand new Spider-Man Madam Web trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.